so hello everybody this is John T. Edmonds for Enduro 21 here in uh, beautiful sunny Spain as you can see the guys from KDM Spain have uh, invited us and uh, also with the guys from uh, KTM in Austria to ride these little beauties we have this is uh, Jordi Villadam's 450 KTM rally bike the very same bike that he rode to second place in this year's Dakar and uh, my sparring partner for this riding session is none other than Mr. Mark Coma. so uh, no pressure then okay so let's fire this thing into into life okay here we go so before we get started I guess it's only right to uh, offer up some thanks to a few folks, obviously KTM for inviting Enduro 21 to uh, throw, a, throw a leg over uh, their rally machines. So thanks to uh, Jenny, Alex, Mark and Jordi. So we're at a place called, uh, I think it's Las Comas in Spain, uh, roughly an hour and a half away from Barcelona. So, uh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to try and give you some kind of an impression as to what it's like to be riding uh, a KTM factory spec Dakar winning machine. So, yeah, the first thing you realize is the size. You know, this is a, it's a full-blown rally bike. And uh, as much as they've made them smaller and lighter over the years, you know, there's no getting away from the fact that it's a, you know, she's a big girl. That said, they are incredibly nimble. The 450 power plants kicking out, I think they said this morning, something in the region of around 70 brake horsepower, and that's good for 170 something Ks an hour. I'll be happy if I can get to 70 Ks an hour. Okay, so I'm hoping I can pull off, pull off of this smaller loop. Whoa, front end's watching away a little bit. Okay, so this is this is the, the bigger of the two loops we've got here to ride the bikes, and uh, what, one, of, one of the first things you, you realise, apart from the fact that it's you know it's it's a fairly big bike, but yet nimble at the same time, is the fact that it's a race bike. You know, this thing didn't win Dakar by chance, and to be honest, when you push it a little bit harder you feel so much safer on it. Um, like I say, first couple of laps of the uh, of the morning session, I felt like I was going to take a serious Spanish soil sample, but thankfully I didn't. And then during the second half of that session, I felt, I felt much better. Okay, so we've got a little straight coming up here. So let me just go down to first gear. Okay, so that's first gear. Second gear, third gear. Okay, that's fourth gear, flat out. Okay, past the photographers. You know, when you when you start to feel more in tune with the bike, you kind of got a, a feel for the grip levels. You you really can push ridiculously hard. Okay, here we've got a, a small section of sort of left-right corners, which to be honest, I don't think I could ride an enduro bike around these corners any quicker. The only thing you have to watch is some of the small stones on the exits of the corners. As soon as you're up on the pipe, up on the uh, foot peg, sorry. Whoa, nearly ran out of road. As soon as you're up on the pegs, you can you can kind of you can play with the power. The power is ridiculously smooth. You know, it's it's 70 brake horsepower, but it's incredibly easy to roll on and roll off. Now, one of the big mistakes I made this morning was forgetting about. And if you can see that, but all of this stuff, the stuff you don't get on any enduro bike. And I'll sh essentially, 
when you're stood up, it's not a problem. When you're sat down, it's generally not a problem. But it's when you hit these rain ditches that that gets very close to your face. Like I say, because you simply forget how kind of big the bike is, you uh, you forget that you are on a rally bike and you have all of the uh, navigational equipment and the fairing in front of you. Once you kind of get over the the fact that you know this bike will move around underneath you, you to be honest, you just have to let it move around underneath you. One thing you do try and do is kind of, or well, one thing I was doing this morning is looking for edges. You know, you can't sit down, turn the front wheel and expect to get the thing to turn like an Enduro bike. So you generally find yourself standing up through everything but the tightest of corners, looking for an edge. Nice wide line coming into the corner. Watch the stones, roll on the power. And I just feel completely at home on this thing. Okay, watch the ditches. I can't really describe. I'm just going to try and avoid that ditch. Can't, oh, I forgot about this one. Can't really describe, you know, just how easy it is to ride. The th you know, stood up, weight over the front wheel, and the thing. Okay, I'm going to do one last lap around the smaller loop. I'm not going to make some joke about trying to catch Mark Coma because, oh, my neuron ruts, because clearly we all know that ain't ever going to happen. strength and smoothness of the 450 fuel injected engine is just ridiculous. Okay, so once again, quick thanks to all the guys at KTM. Hats off to a tremendous job designing, testing, building, and winning Dakar on this thing. Good luck. Dakar 2015.